David here with Big Boot on pens. Uh, you know, sometimes it pays to take a second look at a pen that you haven't used in a long time. You know, give it another chance, if you will. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about one of the very first pens I owned, and that pen is the Nemesine Singularity. Uh, what I'm going to do is cover some of the parts and features of the pen, talk about some of the things I care for, some of the things I don't care for about it, show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, and stay tuned because I have not one, but two of these pens to give away courtesy of Goulet Pens, who was kind enough to provide me with uh, these two pens for review purposes and then to give away. Uh, a few years ago, I was just getting interested in fountain pens and uh, that someone had given me three pens uh, for a gift, um, one of which was a Nemesine Singularity. It was uh, this pen right here in what they called the Cardinal Red. And uh, the person that gave me these pens really knew nothing about pens, and, and I didn't at the time either. Uh, and the other two they gave me were a Parker Vector and a Lamy Next, or a Nex, excuse me. Uh, and I didn't particularly care for the Vector, it's just too small for me, uh, but I got tons of use out of the Nex. Uh, and in regard to the Singularity, at the time, I, I really didn't care for it. Uh, I didn't really like the feel of the nib and thought it was a bit scratchy and, and thought the ink flow was a bit dry. And for a long time, I just thought it was a bad pen and I really didn't use it that much. Fast forward a couple of years and I was doing some research uh, for an upcoming video on uh, pens I really regret buying. And one of the first pens that came to mind was this Singularity. Now I realize I didn't purchase it, but let's ignore that. Uh, when I inked it up and used it again, I was surprised because it wasn't as terrible as I had remembered. And uh, it was just a fine nib that wrote a bit on the dry side and nothing was really wrong with it at all. Um, it's just something different than what I typically prefer, uh, which are nibs more on the medium side, a little bit juicy, uh, uh, but I was more aware of my likes and dislikes now and have a better understanding in my, what my opinion makes a, a good pen or a bad pen. And I have a better idea in the differences between a bad pen and a bad pen for me. There's a difference. So, I wanted to give the pen another chance, so I purchased one with a medium nib. Uh, the pen actually comes in this box. Uh, on the side is an equation, and this equation is actually part of the uh, Schwarzschild metric, which is uh, the solution to one of Einstein's equations that relates to gravitational fields, or singularities. Uh, Nemesine is a brand which has uh, physics and science as an underlying theme for their pens. Uh, you know, I believe the singularity is uh, kind of like the center of a black hole. Uh, say where like some one-dimensional points come together it, to create a huge mass in a very small place. Uh, and in this place, uh, like density and gravity become infinite and uh, time and space kind of curve and the, where the laws of physics are basically ceasing to operate. So it doesn't sound like a place you really want to hang out for, at for an extended period of time. But uh, inside we have, let's see here. First of all, we have some ink cartridges. Count them, six black ink cartridges. Uh, and then we actually have the uh, some cleaning and filling instructions. Uh, I like that uh, for each of the instructions, the very first point says, uh, prepare an ink-friendly area. No basically, no matter what you're doing, prepare an ink-friendly area, uh, which is pretty good advice. Then we have the pen. Uh, this is the clear demonstrator, uh, but they have some solid colors like the cardinal one that I showed and some really nice translucence that we'll take a look at in a little bit. Um, we'll start here at the finial, uh, which has a one feature I like and one I, I don't care for. Um, I like the somewhat pointed finial. It looks nice when you look at it in profile, but when you look at it straight down, you could see the, the blush on the inside of the cap. Uh, you know, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago in another review, but on injection molded plastics, uh, there's something called the gate blush, which um, uh, is the point where the plastic is actually physically pushed into the mold. Uh, and then it leaves a little nib on it and that you have to, it's actually uh, sanded down, which leaves the blush. It's something that 
is on every piece of uh, injection molded plastic and some folks just hide it a little bit better than others. Um, you know, I realize the blush has to be somewhere on here and the inside of the cap is better than the outside, but I, I still think having it right there on the end takes away a little bit from the looks of the pen. Um, it, it just would look nicer if the finial was totally clear. Um, there is a, a very small step down on the inside of the cap right about here. Let's see if you can get a close to that, close look at that. You can kind of see here, if I take that off, you can see that little step down in there. Uh, and that it serves as a little transitional band. And then there are four internal ridges as well. It's kind of internal ridges there on the cap. Uh, the cap tapers down ever so slightly. We're talking only about about half of a millimeter to this silver colored cap band. And you can see here that is engraved with Nemocene. Uh, then we have the clip. Uh, it's a, a decent clip with a decent amount of spring to it. Uh, it's not very tight at all. Uh, then there is a two-tiered uh, two -tiered step down at the end of the cap where it transitions from the, the cap band to the little plastic at the end of the cap band and then the, uh, uh, and then the barrel. Uh, and having this tiered transition really smooths out the uh, transition there and it isn't sharp at all. Then we have the barrel, which is smooth and it tapers a bit till the end, uh, about a millimeter and a half from this part to the end. Uh, and that, uh, you know, this time the blush is actually on the outside of the cap or outside of the uh, barrel, so you could feel it. Um, you know, it, it would have been nicer if the blush was on the inside of the cap rather than the outside. Uh, you know, I realized the difficulty in doing so because then you have to have a very small tool that can get down there and sand it. Uh, but uh, I, I'm just not a big fan of being or having to feel those blushes. Um, the cap screws off to reveal this interesting steel nib. I like the butterfly design on this nib. Uh, you know, in relation to physics, it could be referencing the butterfly effect, uh, which is a concept that small causes can have a larger effect over time. Uh, or it could just be a cool butterfly design. Uh, as the famous quote says, uh, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Uh, and that quote is attributed to Freud, actually, but the consensus is he really never said it. Uh, the singular is offered in extra fine, fine, medium, and 0.6. Uh, there's also a 0.8 that will be available at a later date. Um, and then here's a look at the plastic feed. You know, I, I really like the medium nib that came on this uh, uh, on this demonstrator here. Uh, that uh, you know, I really find it to be reasonably sp reasonably smooth and, and performs very well. Uh, the section actually tapers down a little bit and then tapers back up again and transitions into the cap threads, which aren't sharp at all. Um, then there's a small step up to the barrel. And while the section is on the small side of what I would call medium, uh, it is very comfortable. Uh, and the barrel is long enough to, uh, to use unposted. Uh, the cap does post deeply and securely. Um, it's a bit tough to see, but that internal step up that is uh, here in the cap uh, actually uh, serves as a stop to prevent you from posting too deeply and potentially cracking the cap. Um, this is a cartridge converter pen. Use standard international cartridges and a standard international converter. Um, you saw it earlier, it came with the six cartridges, uh, and this pen does uh, also come with a converter, uh, which is nice at this price point. Um, you know, you can eyedropper this pen, but with a word of warning. You know, I have four of these pens that I've been checking out, uh, two I own and then the two from Goulet, uh, and that for three of them, I wouldn't have an issue eyedropping eye eye them. Uh, the, but on the fourth one, uh, some of the time when you are unscrewing the cap, if you've tightened the cap just a little too much, when you unscrew it, it actually unscrews the barrel. Not all the time, just some of the time. Uh, enough that I wouldn't eyedropper that one. But the other three, I haven't experienced that issue uh, at all. And if you have a barrel full of ink and you accidentally unscrew it, then uh, that would be very, very bad. A disaster waiting to happen. So you might want to test out your pen and get the feeling of its personality uh, and if it would work for that one. Like I said, I have no issues uh, doing it for three of the four, but the one there was an issue.
Um, the Singularity retails for $19.99. So for a $20 pen, it's actually pretty decent. Uh, if you're looking for something a little bit different, uh, other than some of the more recommended pens under $30, like the Lamy Safari or the Pilot Metropolitan, uh, the Singularity is uh, definitely something you should check out. Uh, you know, I'll put a link to the product page on Goulet Pen's site uh, in the notes below so you can uh, check out the different colors. But after revisiting this pen, um, I was really impressed by the value for the price. So I own Singularities in fine and medium, and I mentioned that uh, Goulet Pens has generously donated two pens for me to give away. And these are the Extra Fine in the Aqua Demonstrator, and then the 0.6 in the Magenta Demonstrator. Um, during the writing sample, I'll show the difference between uh, how these nibs write and perform. Uh, but in regard to the giveaway, uh, today is Saturday, September 17th, 2016. Um, if you would like to uh, win either of these two pens, uh, just leave a comment below here on YouTube. And sometime after midnight on, uh, on Tuesday, September 20th, uh, I will select two winners. Um, you know, since there's such a drastic difference between the extra fine and a 0.6, uh, in your comment, why don't you just specify uh, which of the pens you would care to win? And that way I'll actually split up the ent entries and give you a better chance of winning the pen you would actually prefer. Um, if you don't specify a nib size, then I'll just randomly put you in one of the drawings. Um, in regard to a, a comment topic, uh, besides your preference, um, you know, maybe how about sharing a, a pen that you maybe didn't care for at first when you first tried it out, but it's something that grew on you over time or you had a different opinion as time went on. Not a requirement, just a suggestion. So now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and then a writing sample. Okay, here we go with some size comparisons for the Nemesine Singularity. First of all, let's take a look at the, the different ones that I have here. Uh, this is the Aqua Demonstrator in Extra Fine. Then we have the Cardinal in Fine. Then we have the Clear Demonstrator in, uh, uh, in Medium. And then we have the Magenta Demonstrator in the Point Six. For the size comparisons, let's... Uh, take a look at the Cardinal since that's the uh, one of the first pens I ever owned and I had mentioned a couple other ones I got at the same time uh, this is in comparison to a Lamy Nex and then also next to a Parker Vector you can really see that Vector is a small pen but then in relation to some other price range uh, equivalent pens we have a uh, a Twisby Eco and then we have a Lamy Safari and then here it is with a uh, Pilot Metropolitan. And then in regard to some uh, out of the price range equivalent pens, uh, here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapiens. Boy, I don't know if you could tell, but my sterling silver here is starting to tarnish. I guess I need to clean that. Uh, and then here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. And then finally, here it is with a new acquisition. Uh, this is a Visconti uh, Millionaire, which is uh, a very interesting pen, which uh, we'll show in a later review. So, in regard to the writing sample, uh, let's start off by using this 0.6, because uh, this 0.6 is a lot of fun to use. So, uh, we'll at least start off by using this one. And here we have the Nemesine Singularity. And this particular nib is the 0.6. And what I, I kind of like about this is that it's, uh, you know, it's a stub without being too stubbish. Uh, and you can write with it without really thinking too much about it, just like a standard pen, and that it adds a little bit of a flair to your writing, which I, I care for. Uh, and then for the ink, we have uh, Noodler's uh, Liberty's Elysium. And this is the bottle that it comes in. 
Uh, this is a uh, an ink which Brian Goulet had developed with Nathan Tardif of Noodlers, and it's exclusive to Goulet pens. Um, that uh, this bottle it comes with uh, it's a standard Noodles glass three ounce bottle with uh, various historical images of the history of Virginia, where uh, Goulet pens is based. Uh, and this is what the ink looks like. Uh, it, you know, it's a nice deep blue, uh, which actually bears a little bit of a resemblance to the uh, Goulet blue that they use in their logo. Um, in regard to comparisons, uh, it looks very close, at least to the ones I own, uh, to a, a Farney's American blue. Uh, and then also one that I looked at in a previous review, which is the Dr. Phil's or Dr. P.H. Martin's uh, Ocean Blue. So they're all kind of there in the same family, but it's a very nice deep blue. Uh, and that... Uh, here is some examples of the other nibs, and then we'll just add the, uh, uh, the point six here to the bottom so you can see how it compares. Uh, I really am liking this 0.6. It's just really a, a fun nib to use. Um, what you're going to find is that the downstrokes uh, have a, wide, a pretty wide uh, line, but then the side strokes are a little bit more on the narrow side. And it's not something, you know, you can get a little more variation out of it if you push it, but that's not necessarily what this pen is for and this nib is for. Uh, in regard to wetness, when you're going side to side, it's not going to be as wet as if you are going up and down. So if I go up and down, it lays a much wetter line, as you can see there. And in regard to reverse writing, it's actually very smooth and, uh, and very usable. But there's not much difference between uh, using it one way and using it the other. And on the point six in regard to fast writing, It keeps up just fine, um, but as you as I showed before, this is the 0.6 nib, and then we'll take a look at the medium nib. And then we have the fine. And the fine is a little more on the scratchy side. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it scratchy, it's just a little bit more toothy. And then we have the extra fine. I took these pens to, uh, now the extra fine is just much more finer line than I would ever care to use personally. Um, now I did actually take this, uh, these pens to my local pen club and was sharing them with some of the members and one of the members is a woman who just loves extra fine nibs and, and she really found this to be very much to her liking. So uh, it's just not for me but for someone that really liked extra fine nibs, uh, my sample size of one really uh, enjoyed it. So I wanted to give thanks again to Brian at Goulet Pence Uh, that uh, for donating these uh, two pens for giveaway, again, the ones that are being given away are these the uh, extra fine as well as this 0.6. Uh, that uh, it, don't forget to leave a comment for your chance to win one of these pens. And if you like these reviews, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, I have a number of other giveaways coming up soon as well. And if you're subscribed, you can easily see when those reviews pop up. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you later.